Good day everyone. We are the group Cacao Madity and we are here to present our study on the Philippine cacao industry. Here are our members that are very, very eagerly for this report. The Philippine cacao industry is a growing commercial endeavor that could be strengthened with the coordination of activities of the major players through analyzing the agribusiness system framework. The flow of the presentation shall be as follows. First, an overview of the commodity. Then we will dive into the agribusiness components with the input, farm, processing, marketing, and support sector. Finally, we will report our integrated analysis for the aforementioned sectors and our conclusion and recommendations. Let's get started with the overview of cacao. Cacao, internationally known as cocoa and scientific name Theobroma cacao, is an evergreen tree primarily grown for its seeds, known as cocoa beans. Cacao trees grow best with a hot and humid climate, which makes the Philippines an ideal country. The three major cultivars of cacao are grown locally, Trinitario, Criollo, and Forastero. The important events for cacao are flashed on the screen. In recent news, last 2016, the Philippine cacao industry roadmap was proposed until the year 2022 to support the global demand for cacao. The most recent achievement is attributed to naming Davao City as the cacao capital of the Philippines last September 8. Cacao is vital in the $103 billion worth chocolate industry as it is the key ingredient that has no alternatives or substitute. As of the year 2017, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Indonesia, Nigeria, and Cameroon remain to be the highest cacao producers. Small-scale production dominates in West Africa wherein 6 million hectares of land are utilized. At present, the Philippines only plays 24th among the top cacao-producing countries. Even with its competitive advantage, the Philippines remains in a relatively low spot with net imports in 2015 only amounting to 132 million U.S. dollars. A socioeconomic importance of the commodity is to provide jobs and income to alleviate poverty since 90% of cacao farms are smallholder farmers. With the increasing demand for cacao, it implies higher profitability can be generated. Furthermore, its constituents, particularly the Cocoa Foundation of the Philippines, Inc., offer cacao programs so local farmers will become self-sufficient, thus promoting farmer and agricultural education for local farmers. Moving on to the input sector, the major inputs include seeds, which should be any of the eight varieties that the National Seed and Industry Council approves. Presented is the allocation of cacao seeds by government institution. Meanwhile, prices of seedlings are 200 pesos and 50 pesos for aromatical and W10 varieties respectively. Fertilizer is needed to supply for the different kinds of nutrients and for every 1,000 cacao trees, a bag of fertilizer costs 960 pesos. The sources of inputs are widely available in agricultural stores or local shops. As an alternative, Seeds can be also gathered from the cacao fruit itself, and fertilizers can be made by farmers organically. Moving forward to the production sector, the global scene presents a fluctuation in the quantity of cacao produced in crop years 1980 to 2019. The graph shows that overall supply was 3.97 million tons in the crop year 2015 to 2016 and 4.82 million tons in 2019 to 2020. This shows that global production is increasing and it is projected to grow in the current year. The peak price of dry cacao beans is during 2016 at 103.01 pesos per kilogram and the lowest at only 22.76 pesos per kilogram during 1993. A cacao seed takes 3 to 5 years to bear fruits, but it can live for 100 years and is productive for around 60 years. The initial step is securing planting materials such as seeds of NSIC recommended varieties. Vegetative propagation is performed through patch budding, nodal grafting, and other grafting techniques. To reduce seedling shock, transplanting is done a week before field planting. Clearing is done for soil to foster development, and a shade tree is for protection. On the actual day, replacing the soil is advisable. Fertilizers supply the deprived nutrients, and the required proportion depends on the age of the tree. Pruning regulates the height of trees, and grafting removes unproductive ones. Pruning, frequent harvesting, sanitation, and nourishment maintenance help in managing pests and diseases. After 160 to 180 days, pod breaking is done using a wooden baton or device pod splitter. The yield depends on these proper management techniques.
Farm Grow and Water Watch Cooperative provide detailed information of the farm layout and agronomic conditions. The high-resolution images from the drone help in farm inspection to improve the setup and discover areas for denser cacao planting. As we have reached the processing sector, we would like to present the local and foreign-based companies in the Philippines, which are mostly situated in Luzon. These companies have a total annual processing capacity of 20,000 to 36,000 metric tons and produce high-quality chocolates, tableas, nibs, and cocoa powder. Shown on the slide is the processing chain for producing the different cocoa products. The cocoa processed products are as follows. Cacao nibs come from crushed beans and can turn into cacao liquor, which can create chocolate or cocoa cake and butter. Chocolate is the most profitable and the hardest to produce with the cacao liquor, milk, and sugar as its main ingredients. The byproduct is the husk used in the feed, food, soap, and fertilizer industry. Asia's grinding requirement is 1 million metric tons, but only half can be satisfied by the ASEAN producers. The low participation of the Philippines in the global value chain motivated the 17 regions of the country to commit to the 2022 Cacao Challenge and strengthen the industry. The import volume and value of cacao is generally increasing from 2015 to 2018. In 2019, it drastically dropped to 1,122.8 metric tons, being the lowest in the last five years. According to PSA, import volume of cacao for 2018 to 2019 recorded a negative growth rate of 49.8. In addition, export volume for 2015 to 2019 is also increasing. The highest is reported in 2017 at 3,094.4 metric tons. PSA stated that the volume of exports increased by 11.8% from 2018 to 2019. The marketing sector involves the marketing channels, which are the traditional and specialized chains. Like in Mindanao, for example, where the Federation of Cooperatives collects wet cacao beans produced by its members and other small-scale farmers, and then finally sells it to the market. For the volume absorbed by each channel, the required production of cacao in the Philippines is 40,000 metric tons. However, the Philippines only produces less than 10,000 metric tons. This trend is prominent in 2018 when the Philippines only produced almost 8,000 metric tons of cacao that are mostly from the Dabo region that produces about 82% of the total cacao in the Philippines. This results in the Philippines having a global market share of less than 0.01% only. The products sold are mainly chocolate and then cocoa beans, powder and butter, which are sold to local institutional buyers, mostly in Manila, Bulacan, and Davao. Its prices depend on the international commodity prices and also attributes to the existence of middlemen. For promotion, cacao is greatly marketed, promoted, and supported in southern Mindanao. The global price trend of cacao based on the figure is very unpredictable. It went down back in 2016 until late 2017, and since then, there have been numerous increases and decreases. The global demand for cacao has been consistently increasing since the, since the 1900s at an annual growth rate of 3%, and this is because of the diversified use of cocoa beans in many industries. In fact, cacao is an agricultural commodity that defies the law of supply and demand since its price is generally higher during peak season for occasions, primarily because of the increasing demands for chocolates. The Philippines only produces 15,000 metric tons of cacao annually but consumes 50,000 metric tons. The next figure illustrates the relationship between the global demand, which is in the blue curve, and the total global production presented in red vertical lines. With the illustrated trend, the cacao industry is projected to have a massive shortage in the following years. Shown in the next figure are the top exporters of cocoa beans from 2005 to 2015. In 2015, Ivory Coast supplied about 3 billion worth of cacao beans in the world. Imports, however, are dominated by Europe and the United States. Moreover, the top 10 importers shown in the figure already comprise 82% of the total import. And lastly, 
for the marketing sector, if viewed from a national perspective, the status of cacao industry is still dependent on imports. Some of the government institutions that support the cacao industry in the country are the Department of Agriculture, DANR, DTI, DOST, and the University of Southern Mindanao, which provides research assistance, and the Cocoa Foundation of the Philippines that serves the interests of the local cocoa industry. The projects flashed on the screen provide quality planting materials for priority com commodities necessary support to local farmers to alleviate their income, adequate agricultural insurance to counter possible adverse conditions, additional financial support and incentives to farmers, and high-quality seedlings for inorganic and organic production. The Bureau of Plant and Industry lists the following productivity enhancement concerns and strategies in the Philippines cacao roadmap. Some of these are shown in the table. Investment priorities focus on two aspects. First is, to in this, is for industry strengthening, expansion, promotion to regional converge, promotion of harmonization of agency budgets, and conduct of an Asia-Pacific cacao conference, which would be able to market cacao internationally through the help of different agencies. The priority is on resource generation and mobilization through credit facilitation, specialized programs, financing programs, and an agri-insurance program which would ensure that farmers would be able to sustainably produce cacao. Lastly, the other agro-services assist on concerns presented in this slide. In the integrated analysis, we will discuss the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for the five sectors. Establishing cacao on the farm is generally easy because of the wide availability of the inputs in the country. The different and versatile uses of cacao, particularly cocoa beans for different essential products like food, cosmetics, and other manufactured products is one of the main driving forces for the highly profitable industry. Lastly, the presence of cocoa field and the Department of Agriculture supports the cacao industry in the Philippines. For the weaknesses, despite the wide availability of the resource needed, the inputs are relatively expensive and there are insufficient good quality seedlings, tools, and equipments used by local smallholders and farmers are also not modernized, unlike what is being used on top producing countries such as those used in West Africa. Due to climate change and various pests, the amount of cacao produced has been fluctuating. Thus, the Philippines can satisfy the local demand for cacao. Also, since most of the cacao plantation is located in Davao, Plantations can be affected by the feud between the government and the more Muslim groups. Coupled with high transportation costs, there are also limited value-adding activities even though cacao has many products and byproducts. And there is low production of beans which leads to resorting to imports to meet the local grinding requirement. A cacao research center proposed by the University of Southern Mindanao and other academic institutions would also greatly benefit to address gaps and provide solutions. Green innovation and superior clones that are disease and pest resistant can be used to, so that the inputs could become more efficient. The industry is a strong source for income and livelihood generation to alleviate poverty. Lastly, since global demand for cacao in 2020 is projected to be at 4.7 metric tons to 5 million, and accordingly, a shortage of 1 million metric tons is predicted to occur in the same year. Reduction can be exploited in order to participate in the global value chain. The threats to look out are mostly regarding the laborers, such as their old age, low wages, and lack of constitutional rights. There is a limited source of planting material that could be used in vegetative propagation. Another threat is the lack of implementation plans and strong laws specifically for cacao. The overall insufficient support from the public and private institutions would not be enough to keep up with the international market. After thorough analysis, it can be concluded that the Philippine cacao industry is still not well established compared to its other Southeast Asian counterparts. Unlike the Philippines, we are quick in responding to eliminate these issues through government and farmers' collaboration. The Philippines is proven to be a strategic location for cacao production. However, these advantages are hindered by the following. Number one, 
the cacao industry in the Philippines can only cater to energy markets. Although both local and global demand for cacao is continuously increasing, the Philippines cannot keep up with this due to the lack of arable land. Number two, cacao has a fluctuating price affecting the industry's overall profitability. Since certain occasions, like Valentine's Day, increase demand, this lowers the price of cacao. Even though there is no clear, even though there is no substitute for cacao, cacao is produced from various parts of the world, thus it induces prices, price fluctuation. Philippines has never been one of the country's priority crops until today. There are very few programs to promote its sustainability. There are major projects for cacao production in the country, like the Agriculture and Fisheries Modernization Act and the High Value Crops Development Program, but they are insufficient. Furthermore, the lack of international certification hinders the cacao industry to sell in a larger market. Number four, there is an import-export imbalance in cacao. In 2019, the country exported 3,048 metric tons of cacao but imported 1,128 metric tons. Although the Philippines manufacture cacao products, some local manufacturers still choose to import from neighboring countries, thus the high difference between the import and export. Lastly, the overall low cacao production can be attributed to the lack of availability of inputs, facilities, and support services for cacao production. Philippine cacao is a viable venture primarily because of being near the cocoa belt. Davao should continuously be a leading producer of cacao, but the risk should be spread by having cacao plantations in other regions of the Philippines. Furthermore, undergoing adaptive measures such as using varieties that are best and disease-resistant is important. In terms of environmental risks, intercropping or crop diversification, preferably with coconut, can reduce yield loss, as well as using modern methods like sloping agriculture, land technologies, improve land fertility. For higher profitability, it is recommended to have more value-added products, such as co cocoa butter and liquor for cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, and other industrial products. Along with this, institutions such as Cocoa Phil and the proposed Philippine National Cacao Industry Council aims to globalize cacao by helping cacao farmers maintain their plants, establish nurseries, and growing their seedlings to become self-sufficient. To upgrade the status of the cacao industry in the Philippines, the proposed cacao roadmap ensures improvement by targeting to plant 50 million cacao trees and aims to increase the annual production of cocoa beans to 100,000 tons. At present, this cacao roadmap serves as the framework for almost all local and national government plans. Our group personally recommends blockchain technology to ensure sustainability, traceability, and transparency. All stakeholders would become knowledgeable about information on the product, such as farm practices, premiums, and the people who have handled the product. With this, the stakeholders ensure data integrity and accountability of all the participants. Lastly, a proposed framework follow can be adapted to improve the flow of production and marketing cacao products from farmer to consumer. The figure shown is the supply chain followed by Nestle in Ivory Coast, the top producing cacao country, which ensures efficient process line. And that's it for our presentation. Getting to study the, the cacao industry was an exciting opportunity to get to know more about Philippine agriculture. On behalf of the whole group, thank you.